Well, hello, this is Kelly, and I am the Mathematic Plumber, and welcome to video two of the gas control series. Today, we talk about heat anticipators on thermostats. Now, the heat anticipator is a little built-in heating system that's actually on the thermostat itself to trick the thermostat into thinking the room is a little bit warmer than it actually is. Now, heat anticipators are only used for certain systems. We definitely use it on the forced air furnace, but we won't use it for doing slab heat or in-floor heating systems with boilers. Now the reason why we do use this with a forced air furnace is the way the forced air furnace heats up the room. When it heats up, it heats up its heat exchanger and then a fan blows through that heat exchanger and delivers the hot air through the ductwork into the house. Near the end of its cycle though, when the thermostat is saying, hey, the room is up to temperature, the furnace will continue to allow the blower fan to run to cool down the heat exchanger after all the gas has been shut down to it. And that's where the heat anticipator comes in. The heat anticipator is generating a little bit of heat through this wire coil here. It's like a tiny little oven element. And it tricks the furnace into shutting down just a little bit sooner. So when it shuts off the gas to it, and the blower continues to run and circulates that hot air through the house, it doesn't overshoot the actual set point of the thermostat because that is for your comfort. Human body doesn't like big temperature swings. It doesn't like even small temperature swings. So the more accurate that thermostat is, the better it is for you and your customers. And here is a close-up of our heat anticipator. The first thing we should point out are those little decimal numbers. Those numbers represent the amperages of our system. Now we need to set that up with our specific amperage that we're going to measure from our control system. I will show you how to do that. The other thing I need to note is there's a little adjustable dial. And the further we go to the counterclockwise position, the longer our furnace will cycle. Before we go into setup, we should point out one important thing. There is such thing as heat anticipators for heating systems and cooling systems, but they work kind of in reverse. The heating system anticipator is wired in series with the control system, meaning it will heat up when there's a call for heat. Whereas the air conditioning one, or the cooling thermostat, will be wired in parallel with the control system, meaning a little bit of amperage will be flowing through it when the system isn't running, and it tricks the thermostat into thinking it's a little bit warmer in the house than it actually is, so it will start up the cooling system a little bit sooner so the house doesn't get too hot on the cooling season side. There's two ways we can do this. We can just go and look at the amperage rating of the gas valve itself, which is printed on the other side. I'll show you a picture here or we can go measure it with the ammeter or amp meter. So this is my thermostat. It's a little different than the other one, but not much. This one doesn't have mercury in it, so this is a more recent style. Here is my heat anticipator, which looks slightly different, but it's got a little tab that I can move around. It does the exact same thing. So what I have here is my 24 volt wiring all connected up. This actually just goes to and from the different connection points on the thermostat. We're not going to get into great deal detail on that, but it heads off to the gas valve. And if I turn my thermostat up, you can hear the gas valve click and it fires up. So what I now need to do is take my amp meter, turn it to AC amps and go clamp it onto one of my wires here. So this is a clamp style. So on that one, I see 39 or 0.39 or 0.4 amps. It's close enough. If I go to the other side, I might get a slightly different reading, but I shouldn't technically. That's right, 0 0.39, 0 0.4. Now, if this reading was too small, say it wouldn't show up, I could do something like this where I have a 10 loop multiplier. It's just a wire wrapped up with 10 loops. I put that on there and you'll notice, see if I can get the camera focused on that. It's at 4.17. What it's doing is increasing my amperage by 10 times the amount because I have 10 loops there. So I'd need to take that number and divide it by 10. So I'm still at approximately 0.4 amps. I can turn that off. Now we come to this. 0.4 is that line right there. I can see it there. It's pretty small and of course I'm screwing around with this so I could make it 
turn off and on like I just did. Right there. Guess what? You have just set your heat anticipator. Now, this is used for furnace systems. It is not used for hot water heating, especially for slab heat heating. We do not need heat anticipators for slab heat. And this brings us to the end of this video. But stay tuned for the next video where we talk about thermistors and how they work. Until that time, have a great day.